Batman Ultraman became Japan's number one movie on its opening weekend, releasing in 401 theaters that garnered 640,000 moviegoers and recorded a profit of 990 million yen in its first three days, according to Ega.com. This incredible success has led the movie to become the most profitable Ultraman motion picture in the franchise's history. While we here in the West patiently await word of an international release, there is still plenty of Shin Ultra to talk about. Today, we focus on Shin Ultraman's special visual effects, discussing some of the digital technologies utilized, as well as some of the challenges faced by the filmmakers themselves. Before we take off, like and share this video, and please subscribe to Monstrosities here on YouTube and become a patron today. It is totally through the support of viewers like you that allows this channel to continue and create videos like this. The number of visual effects shots in Shin Ultraman exceeds that of even Shin Godzilla, and to properly pre-plan for the film's extensive VFX camera work, the production adopted a video game engine to produce previs or pre-visualization, in order to stage the film's many shots. We used the pre-visualization process to create storyboards for the CG. Post-production supervisor and Hideaki Anno Cinema veteran Michito Yoeda told Pen Magazine. This time we also used it to verify the angle from which people would look up at a giant object when it was in front of them. For some shots, not even the almighty computer could produce what Shin Ultraman needed. Thus, similar to other Shinji Higuchi pictures like Shin Godzilla and the Attack on Titan duology, Shin Ultraman tag-teamed 3D computer graphics with some traditional tokusatsu techniques. Small portion of the film was shot using practical techniques such as miniatures, Shin Ultraman director Shinji Higuchi revealed to SBBIT.jp. After all, we do not have ample resources to solely rely on 3D CG, so we have to decide how to use it effectively. Aiding the implementation of miniatures was a powerful digital tool that the visual effects team behind Shin Ultraman had admittedly never used before. Photogrammetry Photogrammetry is essentially 3D photo mapping technology that can be used for all sorts of applications. In the kingdom of entertainment, it has been used to produce super accurate scans of objects as well as create photorealistic virtual environments. Video games like Star Wars Battlefront, movies like Quantum of Solace, and television shows like Disney's The Mandalorian have used photogrammetry extensively. Similarly, Shin Ultraman used photogrammetry to scan real-life locations and architecture that would be used for the digital backdrops of Ultraman's fights with his monstrous foes. He visited power plants in the provinces, walked around Tokyo, and accompanied the director and film crew on location scouting trips to find image sources for the background, Michito Ueda told Pen Magazine. Shin Godzilla editor and Shin Ultraman's visual effects supervisor, Atsuki Sato, elaborated on this further in his Pen Magazine interview. We took a lot of photos from various angles with a drone and created 3D CG based on the differences in the data we captured to create the background. Unlike previous Ultraman productions, Shin Ultraman's heroes and monsters would be realized in the virtual reality of cutting-edge computer programs. But even in this digital domain, Shin Ultraman's VFX team sought to apply lessons learned from the tokusatsu technicians of Ultraman's past. Back in the 1960s, Super Aya Productions would repurpose kaiju suits used in the Showa-era Godzilla films for their own television shows. Two of Shin Ultraman's Mon stars got their start this way, Naranga and Gabor, who were stitched together from the suit of Baragon, the underground dinosaur that first appeared in 1965's Frankenstein Conquers the World. After Frankenstein, Super Aya repurposed the Baragon suit into the Kaiju Pagos for the TV show Ultra Q. Later, it was modified into Naranga for Ultraman, and then recycled into Magular, then mutated into Gabora, then reverted back to Naranga again for public appearances, and finally restored back to Baragon just in time for the 1968 All Star Kaiju epic Destroy All Monsters. Shin Ultraman director Shinji Higuchi revisited this creative cost cutting hack and tried to apply it to Shin Ultraman's own modern monsters. CG costs a lot of money, so we decided to do the same thing with 3D models and tried to reduce the budget by using two monsters modified from the same costume. Director Higuchi laughed in an interview with Boonshun.jp. But as we were designing the models, the differences kept growing. As a result, the budget became very tight. Higuchi also admitted they ran into similar challenges encountered by the original Ultraman team, specifically citing the example of Gabora and how the plutonium-loving kaiju's fins often got in the way of its actions. In the case of kaiju with decorations, our predecessors would say, this is no good for filming, laughed Higuchi. When you put yourself in the same position as your predecessors, you can understand why they did what they did. Ultraman can be quite cruel at times. 
The cruelty of Ultraman continued as the 3D CG model of Shin Ultraman presented the team with its own set of unique challenges, including how to best virtually replicate the alien hero's silver skin. Ultraman can't be sprayed with silver paint like in the old days, director Higuchi said to Pen Magazine. But if we made it a mirror like silver and seriously calculated and depicted the rays of light, there would be strange streaks on his arms and face, and his arms and face would look like mirrors that would be reflected in each other. Visual effects supervisor Atsuki Sato also chimed in on this. When it comes to color, there are things you can't understand until you actually place the object on the stage, such as the reflection of the silver color on the body and its glittering effect, Sato said. The most difficult part was finding the right balance between reality and image. A wonderful English language article that appeared on Ayaku Web entitled Shinji Higuchi's Vision of Ultraman, the Design, explained that the team was eventually able to solve this reflective epidermis conundrum. With CGI, the animators were able to give the skin of the giant hero a metallic do-over with reflective qualities, reads the Ayaku Web article. Since everything was digitally made, everything fit seamlessly. In his interview with SBBIT.JP, director Higuchi said this, Ultraman is bizarre when you think about it. He is dressed in a silvery, slimy thing that I don't know what it is, and although he looks like a human being, he is something other than a human being, Higuchi stated. For this project, we went through a series of adjustments to realistically reproduce the coexistence of Ultraman's metallic and biological aspects in CG. While the design of Shin Ultraman is based off of Tol Narita's painting, The Incarnation of Truth, Justice, and Beauty, its 3D CG proportions were based off of scan data from the original Ultraman suit actor, Bin Furuya, who is himself a tokusatsu acting legend, having appeared in films like King Kong vs. Godzilla and Mothra to Kaiju Mono and Nezera 1964. Even now, 55 years later, I haven't met anyone who can match his physique, director Higuchi confessed to GQ magazine while talking about Furuya. When he put on that Ultraman suit, he looked like a person from a different planet. Higuchi also said that even if they had created a Shin Ultraman design in the computer from scratch, it still would inevitably look different. Without Furuya's physical features, such as his tall stature, long chin and arms, and large palms, it would not have been possible to reproduce Ultraman's silhouette, appearance and behavior, even with the latest technology available," Higuchi declared to SBBID.JP. For this reason, we asked Furuya himself for his cooperation. So, Bin Furuya, the almost 80-year-old Ultraman actor, suited up once more this time in a tracker lace bodysuit that would be used for the 3D motion capture of the titular Shin Ultraman. Mocap is the same tech used in films like Shin Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters. It involves an actor donning the previously mentioned tracker suit and then performing in front of advanced specialty cameras that film and translate the actor's movements into digital data. Said data then can be applied to 3D CG models, giving characters life. Ayaku Web reported in their article that Furuya's motion capture data was used for Ultraman as a visual guide during production. Character animators also traced over footage of Ultraman 66 in order to capture the feel of the original incarnation. It was a trial and error process, said visual effects supervisor Atsuki Sato to Pen Magazine. In the end, the animators did a lot of work, including figuring out how to incorporate the differences in body shape between the humans and the kaiju. Back to Bin Furuya. His participation in Shin Ultraman at this level is very cool, if not unsurprising. After all, the production of Shin Ultraman has made it a point to include many individuals who had worked on Ultraman 66. For example, the previously mentioned work of Ultraman's original designer, Tol Narita. There's also Shin Ultraman's Spacium Beam, which was animated by the same artist who did it 50 years prior, Sadao Izuka. Go check out the Shin Ultraman Spacium Beam Explained video for more details on that. These decisions, along with the avalanche of references and callbacks throughout Shin Ultraman, were done both by design and a genuine deep respect from the filmmakers involved. The latest technology allows us to do things that were not possible with the old kaiju suits and miniatures, director Higuchi stated. But after trying various methods, I still feel that the brilliance of the moment when the first generation was created is amazing. Higuchi's high respect for the tokusatsu masters of old is perhaps only rivaled by that of Hideaki Anno, who, for Shin Ultraman, was in charge of planning, scripting, and general supervision. Hideaki Anno is a total goddamn dork for tokusatsu, writes Mike Dent of Vintage Henshin in his article Fly Me to M78, The Evangelion Ultraman Connection. 
A lot of what Anno does visually with his storytelling can be traced back to shows like Ultraman, Ultra 7, and The Return of Ultraman. In 1981, the future Neon Genesis Evangelion creator even got to play Ultraman, a bit unofficially, in his 8mm college Return of Ultraman fan film. It was screened at independent film festivals all over the country, Shin Ultraman director Higuchi said. When I heard there was a screening in Tokyo, I went to see it as one of the customers and met Anno for the first time. Now, nearly 40 years later, on the set of Shin Ultraman, Anno got to live out his fanboy dreams once more. He again became Ultraman. Only this time, it was official. Anno was one of Shin Ultraman's motion capture actors as well. Ayaku Webb wrote in their Shin Ultraman article, he mimicked some of Furuya's movements on set. Hope you all enjoyed this look into the special visual effects of Shin Ultraman. I would very much like to thank Rainy for her help with the pronunciations in this video, and also give an Ultraman size shout out to Akno Goji for becoming a Golden God tier Patreon supporter, as well as Jason Mekas, Ryan Beaver, and Godzilla Gamer 77 for joining the Vulture Squadron tier over at the Monstrosities Patreon. It is through their support and the support of viewers like you that help this channel out tremendously in terms of growth and sustainability. Thank you so much for your time, and we will see you soon.